driven in large parts with the efforts of tech giants, the AI market has skyrocketed. Supervised learning has many applications, ranging from spam filtering, speech recognition, to medical diagnosis, to economic predictions, and many more. So guys, without any ado, let's learn the ropes about covering the fundamentals of machine learning. Hello everyone, I welcome you all in today's session about what is supervised learning. Let's cover some of the basic insights about supervised learning, followed by its essentials. But before we go ahead, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel to never miss out on any updates from us. Also, if you're looking for any of the certification courses from Edureka, do check out the link given in the description below. Let's get ahead with our agenda for today. So firstly, we see what is supervised learning exactly. Then we look at how supervised learning works, followed by types of supervised machine learning algorithms. And then we cover advantages of supervised learning, followed by its disadvantages. So guys, let's get ahead. The first question that arises is, what is supervised learning? So guys, it is a type of machine learning in which a model is taught by using training data that has been identified by the model. So basically, you supervise the learning process by giving the model both the data it needs to learn the right answers it should come up with. And this idea for the model to learn a function that connects with the right inputs to the right outputs. This function can be then used to make predictions based on the data set that has not yet been seen. So this is the basic gesture of what is supervised learning. Let's go a bit deep and study how a supervised learning work. So in order for supervised learning to be effective, a data set which can be of a real-time use is required, where both the input features and the output labels are already known. So by learning a function whose inputs and outputs are always changing is the goal here for supervised learning. So let's look at step-by-step -step explanation of how supervised learning functions. Firstly, let's start off with collecting labeled data. So here the first step is to collect a data set with the input features and their associated output labels. So the model will be trained using annotated data points which serves as a roadmap for the data sets. Next step followed is data cleaning and pre-processing. So guys, this process is required for the training and validation in sets which is created and missing values is handled. Features can be normalized or scaled and categorical variables can be encoded. Next in terms of model selection, so it's an essential machine learning method which is selected depending on the data and the problems that can be solved. This model could be regression model, which is used to predict continuous outputs or a classification model, which is used to predict discrete categories. Fourth, we have training the model. So once a model has been selected, it is then trained on the training set by the minimizing a loss of a function, which can be done by iteratively altering its parameters. When comparing the model's prediction to the true labels in the training data, this loss function is used as a metric. Lastly, we have model evaluation. So by validating a set, a subset of the data that was not used for training, this is used to evaluate the model. Here the accuracy in classification issues and mean squared error is used as the two examples for evaluation of the metrics. Next, let's look at the types of supervised machine learning algorithms. So here we have two types, which can be the classification algorithms and regression algorithms. So they are basically two biparts. Let's study one by one. So firstly, let's talk about classification algorithms. Here firstly, let's talk about logistic regression. So guys, this regression is basically used for binary classification. This regression models the probability of a binary response based on one or more predictive values. Then let's talk about decision tree. So by using a tree-like model to make decisions, decision tree is very helpful. This can be used for both classification and regression. Next, let's talk about random forest. So what it is, guys? It is an ensemblance method which uses multiple decision trees. It also aims to improve accuracy by reducing the overfitting. Next, we have in the list is support vector machines. So what it is used for? It finds the hyperplane in the graph that best divides the classes in the feature space. And this can be kernelized to handle nonlinear boundaries. K-nearest algorithm, which is also referred to as KNN algorithm. So guys, this is used to classify a sample which is based on the majority classes of its K-nearest neighbors in the feature space. Also then we have naive base On applying Bayes' theorem with strong independent assumption, this can be an effective algorithm which is particularly effective in text classification tasks. Lastly, let's talk about the neural networks and deep learning models. 
These are complex models that capture intricate patterns and boundaries, which also includes architectures like convolution neural networks, also known as CNN, for image classification. So guys, next, let's look at regression algorithms. So firstly, in the list, we have linear regression. Linear regression is used to model the connection between a set of features and continuous metric. It is also very clear and easy to understand. Then we have regression by a polynomial. So this is a method for modeling relationship that goes beyond those captured by linear regression. Next, we have support vector regression, which is to regress a vector with its support. So SVR tries to fit the best line within a predefined or acceptable error boundary. That is the use of support vector regression. Next, let's talk about random forest regression and decision trees. So by making predictions by the numerical values rather than classes, decision tree can be utilized also for regression. Combining several trees into one random forest aids for more accurate forecasting. Now let's move ahead to the advantages of supervised learning. So guys, there are numerous benefits which make supervised learning a preferred machine learning paradigm. Supervised learning involves training an algorithm with input-output pairs that have already been labeled. So here are the list of advantages which are very essential under supervised learning. So firstly, in terms of anticipating outcomes, supervised learning algorithms have the ability to accurately anticipate the outcomes based on incomplete or missing data. They can generalize and anticipate outcomes for new and unknown occurrences by learning from prior data with known results. Next, let's talk about transparency. So guys, supervised learning is flexible since it may be used for solving many different purposes such as classification, regression, time series forecasting, and many more. It's a flexible method that can be applied in many settings. Next is human interpretation. So guys, in this context of supervised learning algorithms, this refers to the ability to understand and explain the relationship between the input features and the model's predictions or decisions. It means that the output of certain algorithms can be analyzed in a way that provides insights into how each input feature contribute to the final output, which allows humans to make sense of why the model is making certain predictions or decisions. Next on the list, we have active learning. So guys, this is a technique used by supervised learning models in which they can actively seek out answers to their questions from Oracle or human expert can be anything. Lastly, in terms of handling the missing data, when the missing values can be deduced from the given data, supervised learning algorithms are better able to handle any missing value than any other machine learning techniques. Lastly, let's talk about the disadvantages of supervised learning. So guys, under supervised learning, there are some difficulties and drawbacks which are built into several learning and models as well. So guys, the first limitation we have, need for labeled data. So guys, what does it mean? So guys, this means that the requirement for labeled data under each training example must have a label or a target value which is associated with the model. So obtaining accurate labels can be challenging or subjective in terms of domains, which can make the acquisition of label data costly and time consuming. Next, we have data quality and bias. So guys, the performance of the model is highly sensitive to the quality of the labeled data. It is possible for the model to learn and propagate flaws, such as bias and incorrect predictions. If the data is noisy, contain errors, or is prejudiced, it all affects the data quality and creates bias. Next, let's talk about overfitting. So it's possible for the models to overfit the training data or to become too dependent on those examples rather than being able to generalize well to new information. Overfitting can occur when training data set is too small or when the model's complexity outstrips the available data. Fourth, we have limited generalization. So guys, these models can generalize well to the new data that follows the distribution similar to the training data. This model's performance may degrade if it is exposed to data that differs greatly from the training data. Lastly, we have time and resource intensiveness. So guys, at high computational cost and under time commitment, these are often very associated with the training of models. This can be true for big data sets or complicated models. This can restrict their usefulness in applications where time or resources are of great essence. So guys, let's wrap up with the basic essentials of supervised learning. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to like the video and hit the bell icon to stay updated for our further upcoming videos. Wish you happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. 
do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!